I'm like trying to set up a, a payments on your on one of these projects, or how did it come about? So actually, what happened is, um, so one of the projects that I'd worked on uh, back a few years previously was just trying to build a, a better web framework in Lisp. Um, and you know, I was, I guess, I was right uh, that you know better web frameworks are interesting, but I was very wrong in thinking that like anyone would use li use would use Lisp. Um, but I, I guess sort of by 2009 or 10 or whatever it was, uh, we'd both sort of build tons of web applications, but we'd never charge for any of them. Um, like we'd literally never charge for any of the software that we'd built on the web. Uh, and we started sort of wondering why that was. Um, and, and we sort of looked back and we realized that we'd actually sort of started applying for merchant accounts at like various points or we'd sort of like taken the first steps for like integrating with PayPal, but just it never quite been sort of the biggest priority at any one time, and just the net result is that we had never sort of taken a single payment on the web, mm -hmm. um, and yet we were sort of really taken with uh, what was kind of happening in in other industries, where there were these kind of very developer oriented services coming coming along and sort of building these really nice abstraction layers over sort of some particular piece of infrastructure, and just making it really easy to go and and, and do something. So I mean, the obvious examples are things like Linode or Slicehost or EC2 <coughs> for hosting. Uh, also, obviously, Twilio for telephony, just like a lot of these companies. And so, um, I think it was October of 2009 or something. We sort of had this idea that you know maybe we, maybe it would be kind of interesting to, to build a slice host for for payments. Hmm. And that, that's how we thought of it. It was a slice host for payments. Um, I, I guess a bunch of you have probably like used some of these hosting providers, but at the time, EC2 was still sort of very bare bones, and there wasn't really much of a, a web interface, and it was like you had to use all these command line tools to administer it. Um, whereas Slicehost had this like really nice slick GUI where you could just start like you could like click build server and like 60 seconds later you'd have a server uh, and we sort of wanted that like magical instantaneous experience for payments. Sure, and so uh, so uh, Paul Graham has talked about used you guys as this example is of you know really attacking very very difficult problems and people that he he, he uses comparison of how many like recipe websites he's gotten, you know, how many pitches he's gotten over the years versus no one ever pitched this idea. So, and because it was so big, it uh, was, you, you're solving such a huge problem. Um, wh where did you even start? I mean, where, where does something like that even begin? Um, so, so we didn't really know uh, where to start. Uh, and like, I, I definitely wouldn't pretend that we did. Uh, and I mean, I would have started by like crying in, you know, in the fetal position or something. I mean, it's like, you know, uh, did you, it w it's okay, just so, so, you so, so, and your brother, so, yeah, right? So, 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 so basically we faked it. Um, so what we did was um, we decided to go on a holiday uh, and just like go hack somewhere. Uh, and maybe, I, I don't know how to pronounce his name, um, but there's this guy, uh, uh, Mache, and I'm going to totally... Um, like mess he may be his, here, so... Yeah, I was gonna, I'm going to totally mess up his surname, but it, it's something like Sidlowski or Chidlowski or something like that. I apologize, Matt, if you ever see this. Uh, his website is idlewords.com, and, uh, and he's a really good writer, and he um, he wrote this, these, this series of blog posts about Buenos Aires uh, and how it's like the, the best place ever to go and hack because it's really cheap and everything's open really late and there's like Wi-Fi everywhere <laughs> and the climate's really nice and everything. And so John and I were facing this winter in Cambridge, Massachusetts, uh, which, is, which is definitely not like that in, in basically any respect. Uh, and so we decided to go to Buenos Aires and just um, like hack all day in cafes on trying to build a prototype here. And so we did that, and it turns out to be basically exactly as described. And so, if ever like you just want to go and like work on something sort of single-mindedly for a month, I cannot recommend uh, Buenos Aires more highly. We spent like ten dollars a day, and the weather was gorgeous. And like bizarrely, all of the cafes have Wi-Fi for no reason that I can discern. Like much more than is the extent here. Hmm. Um, all the restaurants open really late, uh, in that we, we were turned away from restaurants at like nine o'clock in the evening because it was too early. Um, all the bars are open until like 5 a.m. People when we start going to bars at 2 a.m. and nobody gets up before midday. And so basically, it's like an entire city on a hacker schedule. Uh, <laughs> uh, and and we were like the worst tourists ever in that I still have not seen like a single site or anything in Buenos Aires. We just like got up, went to a cafe, and like hacked all day. Um, and at the end of that, we had the first prototype of Stripe. Um, after a month. After yeah, after a month, or I guess we, we like the first we had the first production user actually about a week after going to Buenos Aires, um, and what we did was we just like uh, called up a friend who worked at a payment processing company and said you know is it okay if we just kind of send a couple of accounts your way, 
and uh, and we sort of built sort of this really nice uh, kind of you know, the, the, this nice API and sort of you know interface for setting up accounts or whatever. And then you know when you sort of click to create account or whatever, rather than uh, you know an account actually being created sort of in the financial infrastructure, you know however that worked, we had no idea. We just like went and called our friend, um, <laughs> which you know scaled to at least a couple of users. Uh, and so we um, and you set it up all manually behind yeah, the scenes. Yeah, this was totally manual. Um, and uh, and I mean, you know, at this point, uh, like we, we had you know, literally two users, uh, yeah. and both of them were like good friends of ours. <laughs> uh, and and so Paul Bukite has this great story about um, about building Gmail, uh, where like he kind of repurposed um, the Google Groups code, which predates Gmail, uh, to build Gmail. And so uh, like he built the first working prototype in an afternoon, and you know it just. Uh, it loaded all of his email into like the Google Groups interface, and he could kind of browse in the Google Groups interface. And he like showed his friends, and they were like clicking through it, and they're like, "Oh, this is great, you know." But it would be really awesome if instead of viewing, you know, your email, I could view mine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was this like very kind of direct uh, user request driven development. Um, and it was sort of similar to this with Stripe, in that we sort of like built the API that allows you to charge credit cards, and so you know went on, on user requests from there. And so uh, Ross Boucher was actually the very first user of Stripe. Hmm. Um, uh, he was at a company called Tuesday North at the time, uh, and uh, and he's like, you know, this this API is great, you know, but what would be really awesome is if you know you actually transfer the money into my bank account after I you know charge credit cards. Like, <laughs> right, fair. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and and you know, similar requests like this. Um, and so. So what it didn't actually it, it didn't actually it didn't go anywhere because I thought you were setting this up on the back end for him or no? Yeah, I I, I can't remember. It's all fuzzy yeah, math yeah, yeah. at this um, point. But 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 it was very um, it was very much driven by basically you know what things they bugged us to build. Um, sure. And so we, we launched this prototype and and again I, I sort of you know it. The, the strength You're not back from Argentina, or, or yeah. So, so so by the time we say got back from Argentina at the end of January, um, sort of the the product existed and it actually existed in sort of fairly close form to what Stripe is today. Like just this this really simple notion that you can you can go to a website w like by filling it in a really minimal amount of information, you can start accepting credit cards immediately on the internet. And the, like the, the the fundamental idea is that it should be possible to launch a website and accept payments on it within like 30 minutes and yeah. you know, before Stripe was um, you know, uh, this multi-day. Yeah, yeah, it's week. Yeah, it's um, five, seven business days, right, something. Right. Uh, and I mean, that, that's when sort of it got hard, right? Because kind of figuring out what the sort of software side of Stripe should look like, I mean, you, you can kind of imagine it. But then like, how do you possibly reconcile all of that with like the financial infrastructure and merchant accounts and gateways and laws and PCI and like, and they're just like the words we knew. Um, and uh, and so we went back to school and we sort of finished the next semester and we decided to, to work on it um, uh, out in Palo Alto over the next summer. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's when we that, that's when we started working full time on Stripe, I guess about a year and a half ago. Okay. And yeah, I mean, so for some background, I'm sure a lot of people in this room are, are, have dealt with this, but one of my first jobs in, my first startup job in college was like signing up or like servicing merchant accounts. And it was, oh, really? yeah, and it was like $2,000 up front to set mm -hmm. it up. And it was like another hundred or something a month. Yep. And then there, and then the fees kicked in. Yep. And so it was just like for a small business. Yeah. It was insane. I yeah, mean, it was yeah. absolutely insane. Yeah. Uh, the, the the fee schedules for many of our competitors run to like more than one page. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, it. Uh, like, I think every now and again you just stumble across an industry that. Uh, like the the online payments industry was just like an unusually compelling example, I think, of of an entire industry that is going to have its lunch eaten. And you know whether that is Stripe or something else, like just this is not how the world should work. Uh, and yeah, I think um, I mean I think I think it'll be very good for the world when fee schedules you know no longer run to two pages. 